Hello and welcome to Vokta Gaming's Carnage Specials episode number six. It is definitely six. So, doing something a bit different here because we have not one but two members of Team Carnage, this time facing off against each other in a best of three series for this channel. First up, in the orange, this is a TVT, so they are both Terrans. In the orange, his name is Lemony Tang. And opposing him today, we've seen him before on this channel in a great best of three series versus Protoss. In the pink, his name is Jimmy. So we have, as I hit every wrong hotkey possible, we have Jimmy versus Lemony Tang. Before I get into this, uh, I want to just apologise again for the previous episode of Stolen Sheep vs. Vi's High Gain. Um, that was the point at which my lifestyle caught up with me and I died. Immediately after that game, I went and got some food, I came back upstairs, I watched Wolf play Goldeneye for about 10 minutes and that's the last thing I remember until 9 o'clock this morning. I had over 13 hours sleep, so I should be a, just a little bit more refreshed this morning. But to get into these players, obviously we've seen Jimmy play before, we know about his top 12 finish at the, I, at the latest I-Series. He is a really good Terran player, he's probably my favourite Terran on Team Carnage. Lemony Tang, I've seen him play, he played in the SC Forum Open, the very first one. We are now in the process of holding our second one this coming Sunday, which will be probably the day after these finally get uploaded because my computer takes forever to upload anything. I'm not super impressed, I'll be honest, with Lemony Tang's play, with what I've seen of it. But the last time I saw him play was a long time ago, so it may well be that he's improved since. I do know that he's high masters, so he must be doing something right. We shall certainly wait and see. It's going to be interesting for me to find out how well he stacks up against Jimmy, uh, a Terran player I have a great deal of respect for in his choices, although uh, occasionally he does drag out games longer than he needs to. There are opportunities for him to win. And I like this, by the way, building the barracks in the factory just away from the front, not bothering to wall off. Lemony Tang you see here walling off. In the end, I don't think there's a need to. I think it offers... Too easy a, a kill because if your opponent wants to, especially on a 1v1 map, just on a two player map, uh, yeah, they can get an SCV in before this wall is up. And afterwards, by the time you build this, you should have a Marine out anyway, and you shouldn't be allowing SCVs past. This is nice from Lemony Tang, though, the positioning of the Marines here. Just going to watch, interestingly, for any Reapers. I remember a point on the UK server, or the EU server rather. Where in TVT, all you saw was Reapers. It was so annoying. And they were doing great for scouting, great for harassing SCVs. So having these two Marines here, that'll just help him should Jimmy be going Reapers. Excuse me while I fix my desk. My desk is broken, by the way, so if you can hear that rattling. And that's my desk being incredibly broken. I need to get a new one, but they are A, expensive, and B, impossible to find in the configuration I want. Starport finishes for Jimmy, and we have a tech lab, so it's likely to be Banshees. Look at that perfect scan there for Lemony Tang, though. We'll even see the start of Cloak researching. So, Lemony Tang should be knowing exactly what is up at this point. See, what's he going to do in response? He's already well on his way to getting a factory. Is he going to add more marines? Getting a reactor. Still calling down mules, so not saving up scans at this point. I'm really interested to find out his response. He's getting a starport. That's not going to be up in time to stop the first Banshee, though. Um, this is quite a small map. So, theoretically, he could get his Banshee over there before the first Viking is out. But he's going to add a turret in. Yep, this is a perfectly fine response. Uh, I'd like to see a turret down here. Yep, there we go. It's gonna, it should get a Viking out of here, first thing. He has a few Marines here, but of course, Marines without Stim are not enough to kill a Banshee. Because with good control, you can kite them all day long. Now this Banshee is on the way. Now the question is, will it hit before that Viking? It should. 
but there are missile turrets up now. Is that missile turret down? Yep, missile turret's down. So there shouldn't be a great deal Jimmy can do with this Banshee. He is going to go up into the main, however. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have a Lemony Tang trying to scout with an SCV, but this Banshee is going to come in. He's going to get a few SCV kills off of the gas. But the Marines are already here. Forces a scan that I don't think was necessary. Because he didn't get the kill anyway. And it would have been much handier waiting until that Viking was out. So this Banshee doing some good for Jimmy. But the scan does take it down. Now we do have a second Banshee on the way. Uh, Jimmy with the whoops there. Having a, a bit of poor control. Lost his Banshee. Oh but this is another huge whoop. Flies that Banshee straight past the Viking. Allowing him to get two shots in. And now is in range of the missile turret. So, ah, ha, ha. That Banshee now below half health. Honestly, I don't think there's much you can do with it. Just take it home, repair it, and use it as part of your main army. Jimmy, meanwhile, is switching to Raven from this. So we do have a Raven. Now, I like that. Ravens are, in fact, brilliant. And I'd like to see them in more Terran's builds. Now, the question for me, uh, Jimmy is adding more barracks. Not a huge fan of this. TVT, for me, is all about the mech play. Hellions, siege tanks, Thors, Ravens, battle cruisers, Vikings, all of that stuff. That's the good stuff when it comes to TVT. Because what happens, if one player goes bio and the other player goes mech, the bio player can never at all engage the mech player. Sure, I'm not saying they can never win. Mech players can play poorly, they can position poorly. But with two players of equal skill, both playing equally well, the mech player will win every time. The bio player can do good harass and that kind of thing, but there are ways to shut that down for a mech player. And as a mech player, it means your opponent can never straight up fight you. This Banshee did get repaired. It is back to try and do some damage, but unfortunately is yet to do anything it has two kills and two kills is not worth the cost of a banshee and cloak now hellion not going to do much against the uh, the banshee unfortunately for it cannot fire upwards but the two vikings are here so once the scan goes down or in fact this cloak runs out there we go oh <laughs> lemony tang wasted a scan when the cloak was already done unfortunate but never mind i don't know why he's pulling back he could easily have taken the center with what he has there I mean, he could do with medevacs. That's really what Lemony Tang needs to get onto now is some medevacs. Because he needs them to heal the Marines. Like, Marines versus Marines, the one with the medevac wins. And oh, very late point defense drone down from Jimmy. That's not going to help at all. Point defense drones make Ravens awesome, by the way. But you really need to put them down at the right time. Why hasn't he killed that SUV? Take this on Argo Watchtower, Jimmy. Jimmy. Again, these are just little things. Like, they're really, really small things. But why allow him to have that SCV on the, on the Zone Argo Watchtower? Just why? It gives him vision that otherwise he wouldn't have. Um, like I say, it's a small thing, but it's a thing. Interestingly, Lemony Tang also getting a Raven out. Hmm. And getting vehicle weapons and vehicle plating level 1. We've got Combat Shield finally finishing up for Jimmy. We've got Infantry Armor Level 1 on the way. And Concussive Shell on the way. We've got two Vikings coming out and another Starport. Let's just take a quick look at the unit count. So you see exactly what each player's got. Each player's got one Raven. We have 41 Marines to 10 for, in Jimmy's favour. We have three Sea Tanks to none in Lemony Tang's favour. But three Marauders from Jimmy. Two Vikings to two Vikings. Three Medivacs to eight Hellions. I prefer the Medivacs to the Hellions at this point, honestly. And we have Lemony Tang with the slight SCV advantage. So Lemony Tang definitely got a good setup at this point. He's already building his third command center. Jimmy's third command center is down, but he's not going to get finished. And now this drop from Jimmy forces that command center to go away. He's going to kill a barracks as well. And a refinery. Now going to just straight up engage his army because I think he has the better concave. Now, these siege tanks, though, could put an end to that very, very quickly. The siege tanks, much damage, doing a ton of damage. And now, the final medevacs 
do pick up what's left of the army and roll away. But we have Jimmy also attacking from the front with a small group of Marines. He's going to get a ton of SEV kills here before these Hellions and this Sea Tank can finally shut it down. So that's up to a total of 15 workers killed. Still not great considering he invested all that money into two Banshees and Cloak. With that, you'd expect to see nearly 15. You know, you want a good 8 to 10 from that alone. And now with a lot of harass as well. So the 15 workers, I mean, it has helped him. Uh, they're now even on SCV, so that does help. And he is going to get this command center up before Lemony Tang's third. Or not, in fact. Lemony Tang. Where did he restart that? Oh, did he restart that right at the back of the base? Oh, look at that. That's a great move for Lemony Tang. Missed that because of all the clutter on the minimap. In fact, the minute he was forced to cancel that previous one, immediately started building another one right at the back of the base where it would not be seen by Jimmy. That is some great moves, and it means that base is going to get up before Jimmy's does. Interestingly, going to float it over before morphing it to an orbital, so it may become a planetary fortress, especially since he's getting high sec auto tracking as well. Getting vehicle weapons and armor level 2. So it looks like Lemony Tang actually wants to go very much mech style. I mean, he's getting a lot of siege tanks. We're having a small engagement here. Unfortunately, there's nothing but Vikings uh, for Jimmy because these siege tanks are going to mess him up. And Jimmy really doesn't have, at this point, an answer to those siege tanks. Like, he's got the Viking advantage, giving him vision, but vision doesn't matter when you don't have siege tanks of your own. This is a strange build from Jimmy, and I'm not too sure I like it. It's it's almost it's pure bio, and we've seen Jimmy do that before. I mean, but he needs to go into something from it. Like I saw him add starports earlier, but he's just using it to churn out Vikings, and the, there's an awful lot more you could be doing with that. It almost feels like he's halfway between bio and Sky Terran. And really, if you're going Sky Terran, you should go Mech into Sky Terran, or at least Marine Tank into Sky Terran. Here we go, Jimmy Drave, uh, Jimmy's Vikings are going to pick up Lemony Tang's Vikings, but it's not going to do him any good, because again, what does it matter? He's got this huge force of Vikings that are doing absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, we have a force of Hellions down here being held off by this bunker. Unfortunately, a mule trap, and as funny as that is, that is also an incredible amount of lost mining there, losing an entire mule's mining cycle. And now a ton of SCVs go down to Lemony Tank, so he's up to 8 workers killed. And again, as we see me hit the wrong hotkey, he is miles in front of SCVs again. 70 SCVs to 51. So Lemony Tank making all the right choices here, and Jimmy making some questionable ones. Jimmy is finally getting 2-2 on his army, and ship weapons level 1. <clears throat> but again, the ship weapons level 1 are going to be no use in these Vikings. He's already killing everything with the Vikings that he can kill. He really needs to do more. Okay, so we see Jimmy's plan. Jimmy's plan is to get a fusion core somewhere right at the back of this base. And he's going to go into Battle Cruiser in the same way that he did against Randy in the previous best of three that we watched. An interesting choice. So it's kind of like uh, skipping the entire mid game and going Sky Terran at 20 minutes. I'm really torn on that. I don't know. I, I definitely don't like it. Uh, just personally, as as a caster, I do not like that bio with uh, bio with Vikings into into Sky Terran. It doesn't work for me. I don't feel like there's enough damage you can do in the mid game. Fair enough against another player, a player perhaps you know well, like Lemony Tang, because of course these two do practice together regularly. Uh, perhaps it will work because of course he's going to know Lemony Tang really favours these tanks he's going to know Lemony Tang is a defensive rather than aggressive player which will allow him the time to get up the Sky Terran he wants but I think in normal play you're just going to get crushed the mech player by now would have moved out and destroyed your bio army and won the game I do like this base for Jimmy unfortunately for him Lemony Tang has seen it 
so it will not be able to land just yet. But I like taking this base rather than this, or even this. It's slightly harder to defend because it is further away from your army, but it's also not on one of the main attack paths. So uh, unfortunately for him, Jimmy spot uh, Lemony Tank spotted it, so he will know it is there. This as well, really good play from Jimmy. Sticking a Marauder up here just to see if Lemony Tang is going to try and take this base. So we have Terran Vehicle Weapons Level 3 on the way for Lemony Tang. We've got 3-3 three, three on the way for Jimmy along with Ship Weapons Level 2. It's going to make his battle cruisers absolutely devastating. So Lemony Tang is going to drop this base here once all the SUVs get out of the damn way. Three scans going down. Um, no idea why three scans used on that when one scan would have seen the same thing. So that makes a bit more sense now why Jimmy has been using these Vikings to pick up other Vikings all the way through the game. He wants to keep Lemony Tang's Viking count low because if he does that, the battle cruisers are going to be far more effective because there's not going to be much to take them down. Now we do have missile turrets going every going down everywhere for Lemony Tang, which will make his defensive position quite nice. We have the weapon refit on the way for those battle cruisers, but we have Thors coming out as well for Lemony Tang. And another base, so Lemony Tang really wants to kind of take the map now. Only two bases left on his side, as we would put it. Now we have two Banshees coming in as well, they do still have Clyde. So Jimmy going full on Sky Terror now. Unfortunately for him, there are so many missile turrets there. These Banshees are not going to do anything. But the Vikings coming in now, trying to get some damage done. But again, they're going to be in range of the missile turrets. See a huge engagement going down. Point defense drone from Lemony Tank. But the Viking numbers are just vast. And there's no need for Lemony Tank to engage. Like, it's going to stop him mining from one gas. That's it. He doesn't need to abandon this base. He only needs to mine just half of these missile, uh, half of these minerals I, but instead he's going to repair his vikings, also a nice choice meanwhile his hellions are going to get into the natural of Jimmy and do a ton of damage here on these SCVs, I really like that there is nothing back at home yet for Jimmy to defend this, so all of these SCVs die, these hellions eat with a ton of kills and that really, really levels things out and gives Lemony Tang that advantage Hellions do get picked up, but look at that, that's 68 SCVs now, 242 mules of course will not help even that out because Lemony Tank has more bases than Jimmy. I like this response from Jimmy, turning this command center into an orbital to get more mules though to make up for that SCV deficit. The question is, uh, will this base also go to orbital? I mean, planetary defense would be safer but I would definitely go with an orbital command because he's got to know he is behind economically we will see now which it will be come on Jimmy Jimmy you've had this base landed for forever and it does get scanned it's going to turn into a planetary uh, fortress meanwhile a base landed from Lemony Tank again should be morphing instantly that is going to be a planetary fortress as well I do not um Oh, what is the word? Why am I losing words lately? I do not fault him for going a planetary fortress from here. Of course, it is very far separated from where the majority of his army will be. And put simply, mech players need less minerals than bio players. Theirs is more in the gas. So Lemony Tang is going to move out on the map now, Jimmy is moving his bio around it which is what you need to do because there's no way this bio force can straight up engage all of those siege tanks and hellions, that is just going to melt I'm afraid. This is going to come down to one big engagement for Jimmy, Jimmy's battle cruisers need to do the damage, he needs to somehow take out this entire mech army, if he does that Lemony Tang will not be able to rebuild it quick enough. Now this bio army is going to come up here. Ah, oh, Lemony Tank thought he'd held it off with those aliens, but there's a lot more coming now. The Thors are here though. The Siege Tank here. Oh man, if he could get a Siege now! Ah, oh, it's going to be just out of range! Oh, he gets a few Siege Tank shots off, and all that bio dies. That bio is about half what it was. All the medivacs are gone. 
So that was really not a good idea for Jimmy, unfortunately. Great siege timing there for Lemony Tang. And now here comes the Battlecruiser, Raven, Viking and Banshee army. But he's going to come up against these Vikings and Thors. And these Battlecruisers need to do something. He definitely cannot afford to lose them like this. Jimmy losing so many Battlecruisers, it takes a long time and a vast amount of money to remake them. And Lemony Tang's the one with the bank, Jimmy is not. So now Jimmy is in a huge amount of trouble. Lemony Tang really taking out those battle cruisers, setting Jimmy so far behind. I'm not sure there's anything he can do at this point with Thor's out. The point defense drone goes down from Jimmy. That is useful, but it's not enough. And now he's going to lose all three Ravens. So a vast amount of resources lost. And now this base is going to go down because the PD, uh, the planetary fortress rather, cannot fire up over this ledge. We have a Viking coming into the vision. That just gets sniped instantly. So this base is going to die. We do have Jimmy taking down the top left base of Lemony Tang, but that's not going to be enough because he has got so many more bases he can take. My headphones are dying. And if anyone, by the way, can recommend me some fantastic headphones, that would be really nice. I want a nice long cord and, of course, to be set up for gaming. I don't need a headset mic built in. I have, of course the blue microphone snowball mic but these headphones are awful they're just a pair of cheap tdks i bought and the sound keeps cutting out on them i have now lost all sound hopefully it's still recording in game i would think it would be it's just these headphones being horrendous jimmy now gonna try and take out this force of vikings unfortunately for him uh he can actually just land them and take out all the bio so, Lemony Tang in a commanding position at this point. He's got over 50 supply lead. If we check the unit counting station, it's 55 SCVs to 40. And just the better army set up as well. There's just nothing really there for Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy making more Vikings, but Lemony Tang has the Viking advantage and he has Thor's to back him up. So, I don't see a way back for Jimmy in this match. It looks to me like Lemony Tang could be the one taking this first game. And as we see, all the Vikings going down. Um, the PDD, the point defense drone, does land, but it's not enough. The Vikings are still going to take down everything there. And Jimmy is forced to retreat with this, the Marauders that are just not doing anything. I mean, going Marauder can help against the Mech play. He's going to try and take down these doors. But in fact, Lemony Tank is going to land the Vikings to add to this attack and also add to the tank. And there goes the bio force of Jimmy. Jimmy down at 90 supply. Lemony Tank up at 159. Lemony Tang also getting ship weapons level 3 and ship plating level 2. So his Viking is going to do even more damage against these battle cruisers. The battle cruisers cannot stand against them. The medevacs are going down. The missile uh, turrets are going down. And Jimmy just has nothing to stop this Lemony Tang landing all of his Vikings to do additional damage to take down the SCVs. The battle cruisers are here now. There's two battle cruisers, but the Vikings can just lift and pick them off. Can he do it before Yamato Cannon goes down? Yes, he can. So that Thor stays alive. Lemony Tang commanding this game, I think, with the better decisions all the way through and definitely the better army composition. He has that upper left base going again. Jimmy has virtually no bases, no mining left. Landing mules to try and get some mining going down. But that is going to be it. He just cannot replace this army. As you can see, he's not building anything at the moment. Three marines coming out, using up all of his money to make them. That is going to be the end of this game. As we watch Jimmy's supply count dwindle to nothing. Lemony Tang sending reinforcements. There's the GG and the well played. And that certainly was well played from Lemony Tang. As he goes 1-0 up in this Team Carnage best of three series. I have been your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain. You've been watching Carnage Esports YouTube channel. And thank you very much.